In this video, I will show you how to remove the upper tension assembly from an early model Singer 99. Let's get started. So if you're working on an early model Singer 99 and you have the tension assembly that doesn't have the number dial, there's a chance that your tension assembly here may still look different than the one I'm working on today. I will do my best to explain through those differences and there could possibly be one more part that you will remove that I don't have to remove on this machine. But for the most part, I think we'll be working with the same parts. So for this tension assembly, we have this little thumb nut right here, and this is what we turn whenever we want to increase or decrease the tension. <laughs> and this one is pretty stiff right now. But the first thing that I want to do is to just totally twist off this thumb nut. So I'm just going to turn it counterclockwise until it comes off. That might take a few turns. So all the way counterclockwise until it comes off in your hands. And here is the thumb nut. Now, yours might look a little bit different. I have these little cutouts here around the back portion of the thumb nut. You may not have that, but take this off and set it aside. Don't bag it up just yet because you may need it again, but thumb nut. Then you should be able to just pull off the beehive spring and yours might look a little bit different. This is very skinny and tapered, but it's because the tension discs are much smaller on this early model than some of the other early models. That doesn't matter. Just take it off and set it aside. The next thing that you will have is this little pin follower here, and it should either have this little tab in the center or actually it may go all the way across and it might be a little bit bigger than this one but take that off as well. And then finally, we're going to remove the two tension disc. Get the spring out of the way and we pull them out. So these are the discs that we'll want to clean up before we put them back on the machine. So two tension disc. Now it's tempting to grab the spring and <laughs> remove it next, but I don't want you to do that because whether you have this exact upper tension assembly or you have the other style that was on the early model machines, this spring is not going to come out now. It's not stuck. It's actually seated partially behind this stud on your machine. So for my early model here, what I need to do is actually unscrew this stud to get it out and then the spring's going to come with it. Now, I would recommend trying to turn it. This one is loose because I actually took it out once already, but it goes counterclockwise to unscrew it. If you cannot get this to turn, then what you can try is putting this thumb nut back onto the stud until you have just a little bit of the end sticking out. You don't want much. You just want enough that you can insert a screwdriver in just a little bit and use that to help you turn. If you put this on too far, or if you don't put it on at all, and you try to turn this stud, you run the risk of spreading it open even further or possibly snapping a portion of it off, and then you're in trouble. So try the stud with the thumb nut on and just a tiny, bit of this threaded part exposed so your screwdriver has something to grab onto, try that to turn it free. If that isn't helping you, lay it on its back and drop oil down into this area here and let the penetrating oil soak in for a little bit. Try again. If that doesn't work <laughs> and that was the case on this machine, I had to get creative. You can take a pair of non-marring pliers grip the stud and turn it free that way, which is what I ended up having to do. I gripped down here where it's solid and it's not threaded. That's where I gripped my pliers, not here. If I grip it here where this cutout space is on the stud, all I would have been doing is pinching it together, which would make it so the diameter here is too small. When I put my thumb nut back on, 
it wouldn't grip the threads. So a lot to remember, but just take your time with removing the stud. Once you can twist it free, it's just counterclockwise and we'll take it all the way out. Here's our stud and you should also have the little tension pin inside the stud. I think it falls out this way. There we go. Tension pin. We'll set those aside. Now look, the spring just comes right out. So let's look at the back side of the spring real quick. Do you see this little tail here on the inside? When you put the stud through it, that little tail just catches the lip of the stud right there. So that's why you can't just pull the spring out first before removing the stud. So we can set these aside. Now's where your machine might be a little bit different. So whether you have either type of the early models, this spring needed a place to catch. Do you see how there's this cutout here on this machine? It looks like the paint's been worn away but there's actually some grooves here. So the spring cannot travel any further than this down or any further than this way up. This cutout stops it from doing that. It's supposed to be that way. Well, it was built into the machine in this particular early model. What they changed is that in some of the early models, this gap was filled in and instead there was a barrel that was pushed in to this portion right here. And if you have that barrel, you'll notice it, it will be a silver color. It will have these little cutouts in it and there will be a set screw right here on the side of your machine. You will want to loosen that set screw counterclockwise. You can take it all the way out or you can just loosen it partially and then you should be able to push that barrel out possibly by pressing on the back side or putting the stud back into the barrel and pulling it out that way. If it's really stuck, drop some oil down in the hole where the set screw was and you can get it out. Since I don't have that particular part on this machine, I will put a link in the description down below to a video by Bob Fowler where he does show you how to remove that type of upper tension assembly. It has that barrel. It's on a 66, I believe, but it's the same exact tension assembly. So let's look at all the parts that we removed. So we have the tension stud and the check spring here. And then of course our little tension pin. We have our two tension disc, the pin follower, the beehive spring, and finally the thumb screw or thumb nut that we use to increase and decrease the tension, which is also our little helpful tool for possibly removing the tension stud if it's stuck. And that's it. We have removed the upper tension assembly on this early model Singer 99. You can go ahead and bag these parts up for cleaning if you would like. Let me know in the comments below what type of tension assembly you had on your early model. Did you have that extra part, that barrel that you had to remove? Because I have a feeling that the one I'm working on is a little less common than the one with the barrel that was put in right here. When we come back, we are going to start removing the needle plate, the side plate, the feed dogs. And I think it's time to go ahead and get this hand wheel off of the machine as well. So that's what we will be doing on the next video. Thank you so much for watching and following along. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye.